Uh, my name is Keontae. Um, I'm a spoken word artist. The motivation behind my poetry, um, I mean, it consists of a basis of a lot of things, more so just my life testimony and just life experiences in general. Um, when I make my poems, I try to make them more as more, much relatable as possible to people. You know, uh, as dealing with what they may be going through in present time or something they may reflect on in the past, that just a light bulb pops up, you know what I mean? And just wrapping all that around to end with the glory of God, of course. Impossible says I'm possible, do what you imagine. Have faith and trust in God and believe that he'll make it happen because I was in the dark trying to find the light. I party hard, smoke weed in that bottle life, but now I'm trying to be like Jesus and live that model life. So no Instagrams, I'd rather follow Christ. Yeah. And being Christian is not a religion. It's a way of life enriched with wisdom. Not perfect, we are sinners who keep repenting. And on the cross it was finished, but it was not the ending. We know that he's coming back like income tax, and that's the beginning of the ending for Satan. He thought that he was winning. See, salvation is found if you ask to be forgiven and believe in the king who died and then was risen. He's the king of kings, proclaim his name. That living water, cover us with rain. The son of God, Jesus Christ. We used to be slaves, but now we live that freedom life. So break every chain, loosen the bondage. I'm a changed man, but I used to be convict. I used to be lost, but now I'm found. My destination was hell, but now I'm heaven bound. How can you be in the flow and the mix of things that you detach yourself from, you know what I mean? I always say a quote, like when I go and perform some places where we need to detach ourselves from the word, from the world and attach ourselves to the word. Meaning, you know, we shouldn't put a limit on just how we worship God and how we get to know God. I know for me, I had a time in my life where I was like, I'm gonna wake up in the morning, I'm gonna use this 15 minutes to read the Bible, but it's just like I'm putting a cap and I'm putting a time limit on God, you know, where, you know, now, I look at my present day, I can go about four hours in just straight, just reading, you know what I mean? And that's how we should be fellowshipping, and it's a communication chain with us, you know? A prayer goes up to God, and Him communicating to us is through His Word. So it's most important, it's the most important thing we have, it's the most important tool we have down here. I hope that I'm planting a seed, you know what I mean? For example, I've you know I've had the, the opportunity to perform in a lot of places where it's either you know it could be 300 people or it could be just five people. And, you know the regular regular people will get discouraged if there's just five people and you're performing. But I know when I'm coming into that place, what I know I have a job, and we have five people here. If that if one person gets touched and gets inspired in the faith by what I'm doing, then I have a job well done. And so you know my whole goal is to really just plant that seed. And of course, just to let the Holy Spirit to come through and water that, you know what I mean? Because that's what it's about. It's not about me getting up there and people knowing who Keontae is, you know. I want them to see, I want them to recognize the name I got on my hat, you know, more than anything. So, you know, that's, that's my main goal, is just to, just to plant that seed. Whether it be one person, I just know that it's a job well done. Of course, I'm aiming for more, but if I got one person in that crowd, I'm totally satisfied with that. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. By living according to what your word preaches and not by what this world teaches. Because see, now we live in a society where lust has become the opposite of secret and sexual immorality is what this generation competes with. Like you'll be considered cool if you sleep with the guy that drives a really nice car or the girl that has a house to herself on the weekend. But young people, please pay attention. Even though God has given us free will, everything you do and say still comes at a cost. Yeah. And I want you to think about this when you're tempted to engage in that late night transaction, a lustful attraction where souls become tied irreversibly. I want you to think about the price of life and where your soul can spend the rest of eternity. Sex before marriage. You see, that's a heavy sin to carry around in your life, so wax yourself for my worth the weight. But Satan gives us thoughts like, well, what's the big deal? I mean, we practice safe sex and he or she truly loves me, and besides, we're going to get married in the future anyway. But you see, it doesn't matter if you wear protection or not. If you can't put God in the mix, that sex unprotected. Yeah. Trust me, you don't want to end up on MTV because you can either be 16 and pregnant or true life, I'm infected. Oh, come on. And these songs on the radio don't help you resist temptation. They encourage you to fulfill it. And this anthem about being drunk in love is actually teaching you to be drunk in lust. Can you hear it? But one is Proverbs 3, 5, 6, and the other one is probably Psalm 46, 10. 
Um, really, the Psalm 46 10, to be still and know I am God. Because, man, back in my life before I was saved, I was just so busy. And we can get caught up in just the, you know, the hustle and bustle of life. Getting up, we're on a schedule to go to work in the morning, come back, got to clean the house, you know, doing all this stuff. But most of the time, we try to fit, we try to fit God in our schedule. You know what I mean? But we need to really come to refocus and fit our schedule around God. And so I always really just lean back on that whenever I'm feeling like stress or antsy. Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. You know, speaking of patience and just really just being still and just really listening to him. You know, prayer, reading his word, allowing him to communicate to you. Um, I think that's that's just helped me more than anything. And of course, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways of knowledge. You know, God, like, some things I, some things I don't understand. You know, there's a lot of things in my life, especially how the point I've come to now, I just really got to think about, like, man, God is so good because back then I didn't know what you were doing. But now in my present life, I see how far you brought me out of what I was in. And I may not have understood it back then, but now coming in full circle, now I get it. Now I like what was popping off. So those are my two scriptures. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter. They're both the same thing, and it's at Keontae McDonald, no spaces, K E O. N-T-E-M-C-D-O-N-A-L-D. And uh, if you go on Facebook, you can find, just type in Keontae McDonald. I, I'm pretty sure I'm the only person named Keontae McDonald in the world. Um, YouTube is Keontae TV. And I also have a, a Bandcamp website um, where I dabble in a little rap. Uh, I, I consider still spoken word. But um, you can go to www.keontae, K-E-O-N-T-E, dot Bandcamp. We need more men to become fathers and uphold the instruction of Proverbs chapter 4. Yeah. And it was like I was searching for my father all my life, not realizing that 23 years ago he was there. And he's always been there, reaching out to me. Correction. Before I was even conceived or ever formed in the womb of my father, he knew me. Yes. He saved me from the destructive path I was on and gave me a second chance. He created a new me. And now because of his love, I've been able to forgive my biological father, work on reconstructing our relationship and introducing him to the new me. So if you ask me now to spell the word father, these are the exact letters I would use. G-O-D, Abba, Father, God. You see, unlike my earthly father, my heavenly father was never a rolling stone. As a matter of fact, the only stone he rolled was away from the tomb to give his son life so that on the third day he rose. I'm gonna go back to the time where instead of the Avengers, it was fathers who became their son's heroes. Come on, I'm originally from Compton, California, and at one point in my life, I was so far away from God. You know, I got to a point where I, I considered myself an atheist a little bit. You know, where I just, I kept questioning God and just like, I don't think there is a God, you know. He, if, he, if he is, he's never showed up in my life, you know what I mean? But it wasn't until that I actually really tried him out. I went to a church. I actually sat there and, and listened to the word. I bought me a Bible, started reading my Bible, letting the word and have it apply to my life and it has spoken values and changed my life beyond ways I couldn't imagine. You know what I mean? Statistically speaking, being a young black male from Compton, California, I see myself being somewhere totally different than what I'm being able to do now. And it's all because I truly, truly gave my life to Christ. And now I know who the true God is. I know that this God is the infinite God over every, it doesn't matter what you want to believe in, the universe or whatever it may be. I know that this God is the infinite God because he's done stuff in my life that I can't explain to you, but that you can see the fruits of what he's doing. So I encourage you, and I say my poem is, impossible says I'm possible, do what you imagine. So if you got a dream or you want to do something, just give it to God. And if it's in his will, he's going to prosper you in that dream.